on today's World Insight, a time of reckoning on global turbulence at the World Economic Forum in Davos. How can nations cope with pressing challenges? We'll hear from Borga Brunt, the WEF president, and China's economy in the face of COVID spikes and the Ukraine conflict. What will it take to weather these headwinds? Welcome to World Insight with me, Tian Wei. Movers and shakers around the world are to meet in Davos, Switzerland for the World Economic Forum's annual meeting 2022. More than 50 heads of state and government are expected to join the meeting. It comes at a time of rising uncertainty stemming from the Russian-Ukraine conflict, the prospect of a slowing global economic recovery, the pandemic, and climate change. The World Economic Forum founder Klaus Schwab says the gathering will be the most timely and consequential in its 52-year history. With the meeting taking place at a critical time, will Davos be able to help address the most urgent challenges the world is facing today? On that, I talked to the president of the World Economic Forum in an exclusive interview. Here's my talk with Borge Brandy. The annual meeting is taking place at the most crucial geopolitical and geoeconomic moment the world has been facing for some time. And also at the uh, centennial, shall I say, uh, pandemic. How do you look at this moment? How is the World Economic Forum trying to define this moment? Well, thank you so much. And uh, you're right that uh, we are probably in the most difficult geopolitical and geoeconomic uh, situation in many decades. What we do hope, though, is uh, for Davos to also look at opportunities for collaboration. And one of the moments I do look very much forward to is when um, Climate Envoy Zhe um, from China will come together with Climate Envoy Secretary Kerry of the U.S. Because we know in the last minutes of uh, the COP26 in Glasgow, the two of them uh, saved uh, the whole agreement and there you see the power when G2, US and China comes together, we can also solve challenges. So for uh, me, I wish for more dialogue and ways of solving problems and not new conflicts. I know both uh, Professor Schwab and you yourself, Mr. President, putting in enormous efforts uh, in making sure multilateral cooperation happens, but you have been encountering with uh, paramount challenges at the, in order to do that. Tell me more about that. So um, we were all so inspired, you know, by President uh, Xi Jinping's speech in Davos in 2017 when he underlined the importance of multilateralism. But really the effect of the speech uh, was about uh, global challenges need global solutions. And lately we have not seen so many global solutions uh, as we would like to. So that's why um, we also know at Davos do remind everyone about this speech, but also about that uh, most of the biggest challenges we are faced with are global and cannot be uh, then solved by one nation alone. Be, uh, alone being uh, COVID uh, or being climate change, being loss of biodiversity, um, oceans, but also uh, the global economic slowdown now that we are very concerned mm -hmm. about because we very much have to avoid a new recession. With the uh, Russian-Ukraine crisis, the energy food uh, crisis, as well as uh, uh, the earlier geopolitical issues, uh, uh, where do you think uh, the annual forum can concentrate on? Usually you try to, together with Professor Schwab, uh, set the tones to encourage every, everyone to be on the same page. So where are you going to start with? So uh, as already mentioned, it's a good start that um, Climate Envoy She will meet with uh, Climate Envoy Kerry. We hope for... Yeah also better U.S.-China uh, relations in the years to come, because these are the two largest economies in the world. Almost close to 50% of the whole global GDP comes from China and the U.S. So um, mm. I hope that is uh, like a small silver uh, lining. 
Then I do hope that we in Davos can also agree among uh, 30 uh, trade ministers that uh, there will be no uh, new tariffs, uh, no new protectionist measures also when it comes to um, food uh, export. We also hope that in Davos, uh, with uh, close to 50 finance ministers there, we can agree that even with the huge infl uh, inflationary pressure now, we can make sure that uh, the measures being taken by higher interest rate will not kill growth. Because there's a very delicate balance now from continuing stimu stimuli of the global economy and also making sure that we don't end up uh, in uh, so high inflation that that again uh, will impact global growth in a negative way. Mm, well said. Now, the World Economic Forum has always been upholding the motto of improving the state of the world. That's what you've been concentrating on for decades. But now we see uh, that geopolitics has in a way becoming a uh, precedence uh, even more than just the trade and economic issues. Uh, so how do you see its challenge to the uh, overall concept of globalization? Are we still seeing the globalization that we desire? Uh, how do you see all of these factors? Meanwhile, Mr. President, it's a little bit abstract, sorry, but uh, I think uh, globalization has been a very crucial word for the World Economic Forum for decades. Well, thank you for that uh, very insightful uh, question. And it's a complex question. So um, we still strongly believe in uh, trade and open markets. Not, let's not forget that during the 30 last years, we have doubled the global GDP. We have uh, eradicated poverty like no uh, uh, time before in history. And China has shown incredible leadership in that. Uh, we have gone from 40% extreme poverty 30 years ago to 10% today. That would not have been possible if trade hadn't been the driver of growth. So we doubled the global GDP, but trade increased by four times. So um, that part of globalization, meaning that we have open markets and nations can produce and export, the global value chains are very important. If we now throw out the baby with the bathwater, we will get less growth less prosperity and everyone will lose lose so we should not like um, they say in english beggar thy neighbor we should prosper our neighbor there is win-win solutions uh, available that though should not mean that we can't adjust the policies a bit we have seen that just in time when it comes to global value chains maybe it doesn't work we also have to have just in case of course you will have to have um, if there is a crisis, um, you know, medicine, also medical uh, equipments available. You can't wait for a week to get it shipped. But uh, that adjustment can be done without losing um, the growth engine uh, trade. Mm. You talk about global chains, global supply chains, global value chains. These are very crucial, particularly now when we are facing difficulties worldwide. This is a uh, uh, the bottom line, I think uh, uh, countries and economies uh, can survive and can survive to a certain level. But now we, we see that uh, the adjustments of these uh, uh, global supply chains, global value chains, meanwhile, uh, geopolitics also has a lot to do with it. Uh, so how do you and your uh, you know, business partners, uh, uh, mainly you, the World Economic Forum has been a platform for many private sectors to meeting together, looking at the issue and the realities. So uh, our business partners are very uh, conscious about the importance of trade and investments. And we are also very privileged that we have many Chinese companies uh, with the forum. And we have a big office also uh, in Beijing. And what our business partners are saying is that their appeal to the political leaders in Davos is that please don't introduce new tariffs. Please don't uh, go for protectionism protectionism, because this will uh, eventually lead to fewer jobs. It will lead also to less prosperity and less growth. So you should be aware that um, we should not change a success story 
uh, with something that is uh, going to shave off a lot of growth moving forward. So we'll see how much the political leaders will listen to the private sector. You talk about Asia being the powerhouse recently in several interviews uh, uh, about the world. And, and tell me more about where do you think Asia is and how do you look at China, the second largest economies in the world, and also as certainly a power in the Asia Pacific region? How do you look at these two geopolitical uh, locations, Asia and of course China? So thank you. Um, this is Asia century, there is no doubt. Uh, Asia is no um, half of the global uh, GDP. It is also a growing uh, region. And uh, China is, of course, uh, as the most populous country in the world, second largest economy uh, of great importance. So uh, you know that we have winter Davos uh, in Davos, but then we have summer Davos uh, in China. Uh, in Tianjin uh, or in Dalian. That also shows that the forum uh, for decades have seen uh, the importance of uh, China. And uh, China's way forward will also be uh, very important uh, for the rest of the world. The way China has, for example, now become the largest uh, producer of uh, renewables uh, through solar, uh, through wind, uh, also with the fastest speed trains uh, in uh, the world uh, and also doing very well when it comes to electrifying buses and communication is showing uh, leadership. So um, I'm very excited on behalf of uh, Asia. I think Asia will play a very important role also this century like they did 100 years ago because uh, 150 years ago uh, then uh, Asia was half of the global GDP. But then there was a period over 100 years where Asia's role um, was not as uh, clear as uh, today. And I think there is a big comeback uh, for uh, Asia uh, in general. Mr. President, you've been having rich experience working with the rest of the world as the president of the World Economic Forum. Before that, you were a very seasoned diplomat. Now, if I put an abstract question to you, I hope you would excuse me, but we are in a transition. Uh, nobody has yet to define this transition very well. And yet many leaders around the world are trying to use words like a new era, a different time, you know, things like that. So, when you look at what we are going through, particularly standing in the, in the shoes of the World Economic Forum, how do you see this transition? Uh, where are we in this transition so far? I've been listening to uh, Ray Dalio recently uh, in a speech, he's been talking about, you know, a transition taking place in the past 600 years in world history. Some could take about 15 to 20 years, longer ones could take about 100 years. So, uh, of course, we're in the middle of a transition, but where are we, not just in, number, in numbers, but where are we in terms of uh, the thinking, in terms of our society improvements, in terms of how to find the new rules, improve the rules? So, a very challenging question. I think we then uh, easily can agree <laughs> that uh, we are at a historical turning point. Uh, in many ways. We are in a historical turning point in the fact that there is not one nation that is dominating the rest of the world. We are in a much more multipolar world. There are of course two nations that are the largest one by far when it comes to economic power. That's China and the US. I think that will continue. But the jury is still out. Will there be a decoupling between these two economies so they create each uh, of their own economic interests sphere, or will they continue China and the US to collaborate also in the years to come? Of course, there will be some competition and all this, but that we can handle. But I think the cost of a total decoupling will be very high also for the rest of the world. Then I think um, there is also a lot of emerging economies out there, nations that have traditionally uh, not played uh, such an important role, and they will also 
ask for increased um, influence, and they will also say that the United Nations, the Bretton Wood institutions like the IMF and World Bank also have to adjust to this. We know, for example, that um, some countries that are very large are not uh, even permanent members of the UN Security Council. I think this will uh, come up. And then uh, I think uh, it is very important that we also um, get a situation where we think win-win. And this is uh, not so uh, much happening now. It's a little bit of loose-loose thinking. What do I mean with win-win? I think what is good for my country is good for uh, your country and vice versa. Today, there's a little bit of a zero-sum game thinking. If I'm moving forward, you will lose, and that's good. No. Uh, we have to think uh, like one did after the Second World War in Europe when the Marshall Plan was launched, uh, then said, oh, if Europe is there with a broken back, it will have negative effect on all of us because then there will be no demand, uh, there will be no um, uh, prosperity in Europe, then we can't even sell our products there. So we have to uh, think much more positively uh, about also our neighbors and others. So a uh, win-win thinking, I hope we're going into a win-win era, but I'm not sure if I'm right. Mm -hmm. Takes a lot of efforts, including those uh, from the annual meeting at the World Economic Forum, I'm sure. Mr. President, uh, before we go, final question for you. During every annual meeting, I know you only have a two or three hours sleep every day in order to go to all the events and uh, meet all the people trying to be the best the host. Now, uh, tell me more about your plan this time. So uh, I definitely hope that I can sleep five hours and not two, three hours. <laughs> I'm I'm getting increasingly <laughs> fond of sleeping, uh, but, um, but you never know. The big difference this year is that we will have no snow. snow. So usually, you know, we have uh, five, six people breaking their leg every day because of uh, things being slippery in Davos. Uh, yeah, so or if they go skiing on the sideline, so. Yeah, so we will have everyone then in the Congress Center, no skiing, no breaking legs and uh, hopefully a very fruitful uh, outcome. We will miss a lot of our Chinese friends. Fortunately, we will have a great Chinese delegation, but much smaller than usual. So we have to overcome uh, COVID as soon as possible. And we're sending our warmest regards uh, to you and all our Chinese friends that hopefully will be able to come with a huge delegation next time we gather in the snow.